Hi, this is Wayne Bilal, and welcome to another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment. Like I said, my name is Wayne Bilal. I'm a local CPA. I've been working with small business owners since the late 70s. Yeah, I earned every single one of these gray hairs between the children and the clients. Um, then what I've been able to do with my clients is learn a lot. I've learned how to make more money. I've learned how not to make more money. I've learned how to pay less taxes. Well, obviously, that's my job, too. But... One of, that's what we're going to talk about today. How do I pay less taxes? All right, legally. All right, we're not going to, you know, love my clients, but we're not sharing a jail cell with them. What's I got to do with smart profits? Well, refresher. Smart is an acronym. S stands for increasing sales from current clients, current customers, with a particular focus on making a profitable customer. M is for managing your money in a way to increase your gross profits while controlling your expenses. A is for action, accelerating growth, all right? It, really, that's the key to everything. Slow growth is tiring, plus on top of that, um, it's slow. <laughs> why, why be slow when you can be fast? R is for recurring revenue, because that's one of the se main secrets I've found to building a successful business is to have recurring revenue coming in every month. The T is what we're going to talk about today. T, finally, is for tax planning, all right? You've increased all your revenue, you're making more money, you want to keep some of it and keep it away from Uncle Sam, all right? So how do I pay less taxes, you know? It's, taxes is a key component of your profit plan. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't want to turn over 35% or 40%. You know, the rates have come down, but still. Why, why give a third to Uncle Sam if you can do a little bit of planning? But Almost, very, truthfully, very few business owners do anything to reduce their income tax bill. Um, most of them assume, hey, Lupe, good to see you. If you got questions at the end, shoot me an answer or anytime, shoot me a question. Um, most business owners assume, truthfully, that all they have to do is turn it over to their CPA, and their CPA will do the, their magic, and the tax return is done. And... We're finished. You know, they put a little checkbox. It's done. We, we hit the deadline. The IRS is happy. The truth is, the smartest business owners focus on finding legal methods of reducing their tax liability. They, these smart business owners pay substantially less than the average business owners, okay? What do they do first? First, they prioritize tax planning. We're swamped. In November and December, I'm dealing with my most successful business owners. This year, we saved them over a million dollars since... In 2016, 17, and 18, we've saved over $4.3 million so far. Um, tax planning is one of the very few things that can actually guarantee to give you a return. I mean, I don't even charge somebody unless I can save them four times what I'm going to charge them. And even the ones, I had a half a dozen this year where I looked at it and said, yeah, I can't really save you that much, but here's one, two, three, four, five, six things you should do, you know, that can help you. You're getting... You know, of course, unless you have a loss or you don't have a lot of income. But I'm talking about once you do the steps that we're going to show you in the course I'm doing one on February 21st. I'm going to do an online one later in the month, uh, early March, the latest, okay? So unless you're, you know, if you, once you start building up your business, the next thing is I got to do tax plan. Well, what I hear too often, you know, is I'm way too busy. That's my CPA's problem. I hire a good CPA. Well, the problem is, it's you, you tax planning is something that is partially your job because it's you need to learn how it works okay um so how much let me go down to here why does tax planning work it works because it gives you the time to do things with your business that you can't do after year end truth of the matter is it's 2019 right now i'm working on 2018 tax returns not a heck of a lot i can do all right I, my main job at this time and the main job of all tax preparers at this time is to sit down and we're going to, at this point, put the historical information on the return in the best way compliantly to keep you legal and to reduce your audit risk, all right? So tax planning is what you want to start doing July, August, definitely November, December. So one of the things, here's tip number one. If you're having a substantially better year in 2019 than you were in 2018, by June or July, call your tax preparer. You need to start planning because there's some things we can do. Businesses tend to do a hockey stick. They struggle, 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 and then they all of a sudden they take off. All right? If you're in this, call your CPA or you're going to get a surprise. I was talking to a client. You know, that's how he ended up with me. Uh, he had a good year, had $100,000 in the bank. 
owed 120 at the end of the year was totally unnecessary. All right. So what else do smart business owners do? They call their tax advisor before they make a major decision. All right. Call us. <laughs> you know, every CPA and tax preparer can tell you a story about a taxpayer who did something and just didn't seem to think it was important to get to call us. I'll give you a simple one. There's a lot, but I'll give you a simple one. I had a guy that was a golf, been a client of mine a long time, so I don't know why he didn't pick up the phone and call me. I don't charge for phone calls. Shoot me a text message or shoot me an email, something. Anyways, what he did is he talked to his golf buddy. He was 59, just turned 59, took $50,000 out of his IRA. Because once it's 59, there's no penalty, according to his golf buddy. If he'd called me, I would have told him it's 59 and a half. That not calling me cost him a $5,000 penalty. <coughs> so your choice. You can ask your golf buddy, your friend, whoever, or you can call your tax advisor. Smart business owners keep good records. You know, one of the things I hear all the time is, well, if I have kind of sloppy records, I can pocket some of the money and I don't have to pay. I don't do their tax return, but I also tell them they're probably cheating themselves. My experience has been if you're sloppy on the income side, you're sloppy on the expense side. And what ends up happening is you're probably not cheating the government. You're probably cheating you. And worse, when you get audited, you can't prove your expenses, but they can probably prove your income by recreating it. <coughs> My apologies. Still fighting that cold. Smart business owners start their taxes early. All right. I, I can, I've sat down and looked at it. Most of my mistakes are going to happen within five to 10 days of the deadline, which is why we just stop bringing in new clients. We finish the work we have, all right? Every October 15th or September 15th, there's some returns that don't get done because they show up like the day before. Give us time, all right? Let us have some time to work with it. Let us have some time to talk to you. Let us have some time to see if we can help you, all right? Smart business owners save for the taxes all year, all right? One of the things that I, well, I'll do with business owners it, it, when they owe money is we'll sit down and say, all right, you collect $100,000, you owed $5,000, just keeping the math simple, all right? That's 5%. What you need to do, and I do it, every week I look at what I collected and I move 10% into, the, into a, uh, a separate bank account. 10% is more than enough, all right? But I know I have to live on 90%. See, one of the biggest problems is when we change from being an employee to owning our own businesses, as an employee, whatever we received was ours because the tax was already taken out by our employer. And, you know, we were prepaid. When you're a business owner, you're the employer. You have to take the taxes out, all right? Um, it's much easier, by the way, to save $250 per week as you collect it than it is to come up with $13,000 at the end of the year, all right? Um, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Biggest thing you need to do as a, as a business owner is, to, is you got to have good records. you got to see where you're at so that you know where you're at. You need to do tax projections. Call me before you do anything out of the ordinary to make sure there's not a better way for you to do it, all right? Um, and then save the money as you go. More importantly, tax planning. Don't forget to do tax planning at the end of the year. Even if you're not making a ton of money, there's some steps you can make, you can take. Um, I post uh, articles to my blog every November, updating the latest moves you can make. You can definitely grab those and you can call me if you're making a lot um, and, you know, at least get a projection so you're not surprised. <laughs> At a very minimum, I'm going to tell you what I think you're going to owe roughly. And you're not going to find out five days before the deadline. Anyways, that's the T from the Smart Profit Maximizing. We're not going to spend as much time on this going forward. I wanted to do it today because we're getting into tax season. Um, we'll, I spend more, you know, midsummer. we'll talk about it again. And then at the end of the year, I talk about it quite a bit. So until next time, this is Wayne Blau saying let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.